On shoot, ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Did I win? I probably did. I probably did. <laughs> In this video, we are going to build this amazing rock, paper, scissors game, okay? So it's probably the sexiest rock, paper, scissors game you've ever seen in your entire life, right? Okay, so without further ado, let's get started, okay? So let's, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my desktop and create a folder called rock, paper, scissors, okay? Okay, and let's go inside that and we'll do touch index.html, styles.css, and app.js, okay. And then we'll open this guy and add him. All right, so it's opened. It's taking a while these days, I don't know why. Okay, cool. So let's close these guys down first and let's open up index.html, CSS, okay. All right, so let's start coding. So the first thing we have is, uh, the first thing we have is the header, right? So before that, let's get the skeleton out of the way, rock, paper, let's call it rock, paper, scissors game or something. Okay. All right. And let's open this guy up and let's type in some gibberish here. Okay. And open in browser. Okay. So this is, this is the working version and this is the non working version. Okay. So as you can see, our HTML file is working. So let's get rid of that. Okay. So the first thing we have is the header. So let's uh, get that in a header tag, not a div tag. So far we've done pretty much everything in a div tag and that's okay but uh, we, we want to be more semantic okay so there's a header uh, it's a header so we want to put it in a header tag if it's a footer we want to put it in a footer tag okay and then later on we'll go over section two but in this video we'll just for those we'll just do divs okay so header um, and then this one has an h1 rock paper scissors okay okay let's go here refresh okay that's how it looks hideous right so we'll add the css later okay so that's the header and then we have a div for uh choices no 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 we have the scoreboard div so we'll give it a class of scoreboard okay and then in our scoreboard we have two badges right user and computer it's on the edges but we'll do that with css later but we have two badges um user and computer and then we have the scores themselves zero zero starting number zero zero okay so for that we'll do um, div of, let's do, uh, let's see, this one going to be user. So we'll say user and for this, we'll give it a badge class of badge. We'll copy this paste. And the next one is going to be computer comp. Okay. Now classes are cool because we can share, uh, you know, the same styles across those two divs, right? With the same class called badge. But we also want some IDs because we want to uniquely position the user and comp later, right? Because the user is on the left hand um, and then the comp is on the right hand side. So what we want to do is say uh, ID of, let's say we give it a ID of user label. And then for this one, we'll give it an ID of comp computer label. Okay. All right. So once we have this, let's go back and see how it looks. All right. Nothing special. Okay. So let's go and now actually put the scores. Okay. So now what we do is add a span tag, not a div tag because they're in the same line. Spans are inline elements. Divs are block level elements. Okay. So span will do zero, right? It starts from zero. Um, later we'll change it, but for now we'll uh, start with zero and we want to give the first span an ID of user score because the left hand side it's going to be user right and then we want to copy this and then paste it okay so copy paste and we want a colon in the middle and then we'll call this computer score okay so now refresh okay that's how it looks so far okay all right let's keep moving now we also need the message right so now we need the paper covers rock message so for that we'll create a div here and we'll give it a class of, I don't know, result, okay? And then we'll say paragraph and we'll say paper, whoa, paper covers, I can't type anymore, rock, you win, okay, cool. And now let's go back, refresh, that, that's how it looks, okay? Now we wanna add the choices, right, these images, okay? So for that, we'll do div of class of choices 
and then we'll have inner divs, okay? We'll, we'll have those images uh, wrapped inside each div, okay? So we'll do div and we'll say choice because it's a bunch of choices, so we'll have choice for each one of them. And then we'll do image. And right now, I don't have images um, in my directory, as you can see, I don't have images, right? So what I'll do is I'll pull it from my working directory, okay? So from this uh, folder uh, and put it in this folder, copy it basically. So uh, what I'll do is open hyper, okay. And then let's do this, cool. So now I have the images here. If you see here, there it is, right? These are all the images. Don't worry about the DS store, that's nothing. So I just copied it and pasted it in here, okay? So now what I can do is go here, image source, and I can say images slash, um, it's called rock, I think, rock. PNG, the first one is rock, right? Okay, and then I'll copy this three times. One time, two time, okay. And then this one is going to be, okay, let me first refresh it. Okay, that's how it looks so far. And now I'll change this to paper, refresh. Okay, that, that's how it looks. And then for the third one, we'll do scissors. Cool, so now we have the images um, and I think that's it for them. Oh, we also want to um, add some IDs to each of these divs, okay? Because later on, we want to be able to identify each rock, paper, scissors, okay? So what we do is we just give it an ID of R, okay? We don't need to say rock, um, and then ID of P, and then ID of S. All right, so that's it for the choices. So well, let's go down, um, hold on. Okay, cool. All right, now what do we have left? We have this message left, right? Make your move. So let's do that, okay? So let's P and all you do is let's give it an ID of action message. Okay, action message, sounds weird. <laughs> and then all you do is make your move, okay? All right, so now let's go here, refresh, that's how it looks like, okay, cool. So now let's actually add the styles. Before I add any styles, I wanna make sure I link it, so link, and we'll go here and say styles.css, okay? And now when I write something in here, let's do body background to like red or something, okay? Boom, okay, so it works. Okay, so let's get rid of it. Again, as always, let's start off with the Universal selector, get rid of the default margin and padding. So before I do that, let's refresh here. Oh, let's get rid of it. Okay, refresh. What? Okay, margin zero, padding zero, and then we want box sizing to border box, okay? And refresh, that's it, right? Margins are gone, okay. so. The first thing we have to do is we have to style this header. So for that, we will say, so let's go to index, we have header, and we'll just say header, okay, header background to be white, right? It's white, and uh, what is it? And for the text color, we'll do header h1, header h1, color is what is that color? Let's get that color. Um, hold on just a second. Let me open up my color picking tool. All right. And the color is, let's see. All right, that's the color, okay? So let's go here, refresh. Okay, that's how it looks like right now, nothing special. And we also want to text align this to center and then font family to ASAP and then backup is sans serif. Okay, so let's see if that works. All right, so that looks good. And now we also want some margins and padding. So we'll do margin or padding of 20 pixels on the parent. So there should be some breathing room. Okay, cool. And now, as you can see here, this um, the entire body's background is this dark bluish color, right? So for that, we'll just go right above this and we'll say body background color to that color. So again, let's grab that color. Boom, boom, okay. Okay, and actually this should be a color for this one too. Okay, cool. Refresh and 
there it is, right? So now it's looking a lot similar, okay? Cool. And now we also want to, let's see, what, what do we want to do? Oh, sorry about that. We have not imported the ASAP um, font yet, right? So uh, you guys probably know how to do it. Go to fonts.google.com, fonts.google.com, and then uh, go to ASAP, right? Go to ASAP, click this plus button, and then you go come down here, click on this, go to customize. You want to get the, you know, bold and medium. You don't need to, but, you know, it's better if you have options, right? So grab that, go here to CSS, go up at the top, paste it, and boom, right? It's done. Now, if you go back here, right? Right now, it looks like this. I'm going to refresh, and there it is, right? It's a little different. Okay. Once we have this, now we have to style the scoreboard, right? Okay, so what I'll do is let's go to scoreboard, okay? Because we gave it a class of scoreboard, right? If you guys remember, we gave this div a class of scoreboard. So we'll do scoreboard. I'll first give it a border of three pixels solid white, okay? Let's see how it looks. Okay, that's how it looks right now. It's 100% width, okay? We don't want it to be 100% width. We want it to be less than that, so 200 pixels or something, okay? Refresh, okay, that looks a lot better. But now this one's too close to the header, right? So we want some space at the top and bottom. So for that, we'll give it a margin, um, whoa. Margin of, let's say, 20 pixels at the top and bottom and then center it, okay? So we'll do enter and there it is, right? It's centered and then we have 20 pixels at the top and 20 pixels at the bottom. Okay, so that looks good. Now we also wanna change the text, right? The font color. Okay, so the font color is going to be white. Refresh, okay, that looks good. And we also wanna change the font size to be 40 pixels or 46 pixels, I think. There it is, right? So that looks gigantic right now, but we'll fix it in a bit, okay? This user and comp is supposed to be out of uh, the box. So for that, um, before I go into that, let's uh, also fix the border radius because if you guys notice here, this one's kind of rounded. This one's not rounded. So border radius is going to be, let's do four pixels. Refresh. Okay. That's how it looks like. Cool. We'll also text align the, all this to center. Okay. Refresh. All right, that looks good. And we'll also give it some padding of, let's do 15 pixels on the top and bottom and 20 pixels to the left and right. Okay, so there's some breathing room now. And we also want to change the font family, okay? And let's do ASAP and then sans serif. Okay, cool. Refresh. All right, so that looks good, but now we also want to style these guys, okay, these bad boys. So for that, we'll go down here, and if you guys remember, we called them badges, right? We gave them a class of badges. So we'll first style that, and then we'll go into user label and computer label, okay? So we'll go, hold on, okay? And we'll say dot badge, background is going to be, let's get that background color, okay? Boom, come on, why is it not working? Okay, the color is that guy, okay? So background is that, and we also want a color to be white. It's I think it's already white, but let's just make sure. Okay, that, that's how it looks like, cool. Once we have that, now let's change the font size because that's humongous, so we'll do font size to be 14 pixels, okay? And then we'll give it a padding of two pixels on the top and bottom, and then give some paddings on the right and left. And we'll also give it a font family of ASAP sans serif, okay? Refresh. Okay, that's how it looks like, right? Okay, so the styling is good, but now we need to take it, we need position the user to the left and comp to the right, right? So what we do is for that, if you guys remember, we gave these IDs of user label and computer label. So we'll do user label, okay? And we'll do position of absolute. Again, if you guys don't know what positioning is, just go watch my like CSS videos, okay? And then my previous project videos. So, so if I do top zero, left zero, it will position it to the browser's top left corner. There it is, right? But that's not what we want. We want the starting position to be not the browser's top left corner, but the 
transparent, this uh, scoreboard's top left corner, okay, so that it's easier to do things and it's more consistent later when we resize our screen, okay? So for that, we, we will have to give our scoreboard, which is our parent, right here, the parent of this is the scoreboard. So we'll give this a position of something other than static or inherit, okay? So which is, we'll just say relative. All right, now refresh and it starts from the scoreboard's top left corner, right? So once we have this, now we can position it. So we'll say top of 30 pixels and then we'll say left of, if you do positive, we'll push it to the, push it to the right. We, we don't wanna push it to the right, we wanna push it to the left, right? So refresh, that's how it looks like. And if I do negative, it looks like this, right? So we want negative 25. Let's see. Okay, that looks good. And uh, now we'll copy this and do the same thing for you, computer, right? So computer and position absolute top 30 pixels. And then now we don't wanna do left here. Uh, we, can, we can do left. Okay, so if I refresh, that's how it looks like right now, right? It's hiding behind. The user is hiding behind the computer. So if I do here, instead of negative 25, if I do like, 35 pixels, right? Right now it's right there. But let's just do right, okay? Instead of left, we'll just do right. So, and then now it starts from the right-hand side. So if I do zero pixels here, it starts from the right-hand side. You see that, right? Uh, but we don't wanna do zero pixels. Um, and if we give it a positive number, it will push it to the left. If I do 10 pixels, 20 pixels here, you see, it pushes, pushes it to the left because it's the right property. So we want to say negative here, okay? Negative 25 pixels or something. Okay, uh, maybe 35? No, 30. Okay, so that looks pretty good. All right, so now we are done with the scoreboard. Now we wanna get this thing working, okay? So right now it's super small and black, so we'll change that. And we called it dot .result, yes. So we'll say dot .result, and uh, let's enter a bunch, let's bring it to the top, okay. And now we'll say font size, okay, 40 pixels. Let's see how it looks. Okay, that looks pretty big. All right, and now we'll do font color to be white. Fresh, we also want a text align to the center, so we'll do dot result, h1, text align center, refresh. Okay, whoa. Why is it not working? Oh, it's a p tag, it's not an h1 tag. Silly me, p tag. Okay, that looks good, and we will also change the font family to ASAP. I should really put this at the top instead of repeating font family every single time because it's gonna be the same font, but it's okay. Um, all right, so now we have that. I think we also need to make it bold, so we'll do font weight, weight of bold. Okay, refresh. All right, that looks good, right? Yep. Is the color a little bit different? I think it's a bit different on mine than here. Why is that? Let's see. I think the real color is this right here. Okay, so now let's see if that works. Okay, there it is. That looks a lot better. Okay, cool. All right, now let's go over the actual images, okay, for the choices. The rock, paper, scissors, hand. Okay, so we'll do, for that we'll go down here and uh, index.html, we called it choices, and then choice for each one of them. Okay, so what we have to do is we'll say, the first thing we'll do is dot choice, okay, we'll grab each one, and we'll do display inline block. Okay, so that will make it horizontal. Cool, and now we also need to text align this, so we'll do, go to the parent, text align center. Refresh, okay, that's how it looks like. And we also want some margins in, because we, we want some space at the top and bottom. So we'll do margin of, not margin left, margin of 50 pixels at the top and bottom, and we'll do zero, okay? 
So refresh, all right, that's how it looks like. I think we also need a border, so we'll do, go to the choice and we'll say border of four pixels solid, solid white. Okay, so let's see how it, how it looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now we also wanna make it circular, right? So for that, it's pretty simple, border radius. And you always want it to be the half of the width. So right now our width, I don't know what the width is here, but the, the whole point is because you don't know the width every single time, um, you wanna do 50%. Okay, because you, you don't know the exact width in pixels. I mean, we can find out, but it's not that practical. Okay, you always want to use percentages. Save, refresh. Okay, that looks good. Uh, we also need some padding. So we'll do padding of 20 pixels. Let's see how it looks. I don't know. Okay, that's too much. Let's instead do 10 pixels. Okay, that's... A lot better okay now we also want some uh, space in between each choice okay so for that we'll give it a margin okay margin of um, zero pixels to the top and bottom and we'll do 15 pixels to the left and right all right that looks good maybe 20 20 pixels okay it looks good right no change okay I think that's it for the um, images, but now we also want something to be happening when we hover over. You see, when we hover over it, the background changes, right? And the uh, cursor changes from this pointer to like uh, this hand tool, right? So what we do is for that, we go down here, we do dot choice, hover, okay? On hover, we want the background to change and also we want the uh, cursor to change. So cursor, we wanna say pointer, okay? So that's how you change it. Now when I go over it, okay, that's the working version. Let's go here, refresh. There it is, right? It changes. So we have that working. Now let's uh, also change the background. So we'll do background of, what's the color? I don't know what the color is. Let's say, let's just do something darker. Let's go here, get that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, let's do this. Okay, all right, that looks good. Now that works, but if you notice something, when, when I hover over it, the color of the background changes right away, right? Like instantly, okay? So let me give it something else for now. Let's do red or something, okay? Right, it changes instantly. We don't want that. We want something more smooth, okay? So we go here and do transition and we can do all 0.3 s ease okay so 0.3 s 0.3 stands for how many seconds um and uh s is you know seconds so here if i do one s you see it's pretty slow right but that's not so natural it's way too slow so uh what you want to do is 0.3 okay that's what i use usually so now it's a little bit more natural right so let's go back and change this color back to that so we'll do was it this color no this color okay there it is okay cool so now once we're done with that let's make this make your move thing work so that's called the action message so we'll do <clears throat> action message and this one's pretty simple like text align this to center color is white font family repeating for the hundredth million time. All right, that looks good. Um, we also want it to be bold and a little bit bigger. Font weight to be bold and font size to be 20 pixels. Okay. All right, that looks good. Um, hmm, why is that going down? Oh, okay, if you notice something here, our make your move is a little, you know, shifted downwards a little bit more than the original one. So for that, that's happening because we have 50 pixels for the choices. You see that? Choices is this whole thing, this whole thing, right? And this one has a margin uh, top of 50 and bottom of 50. So to fix this, what we can do is say, just margin top here, instead of doing a margin like that. So now it only gives the margin top, and now that's too close, but now we can add a margin top here of 20 pixels or something. All right, there it is. 
Whoops, we're missing a period, so let's get that. All right, so that looks good. All right, guys, so that's it for Rock, Paper, Scissors, HTML, and CSS part. We're gonna do the JavaScript part, okay? So I'm excited. I'm sure you're excited. So what are we waiting for? Let's get into it, all right? Let's get into it. So I have my Atom open in the right-hand side and the app open in the left-hand side. This is the working version. So let's first take a look at how the JavaScript is working, okay? So I'm gonna refresh here. And when I click on the rock, boom, rock user loses to paper, okay? Boom, I haven't fixed all of it yet, but we'll fix it, okay? It's supposed to be subscripted, all of it. So when you click on rock, if you win, it goes, hey, you know, you won, and uh, the user score goes up, and uh, when you win, the the border there's a green border it stays there for like 300 milliseconds and then it goes away okay if it's a draw then it's a, it's the gray color so that's a draw okay and you probably noticed the numbers didn't change okay and if it's uh if you lost then it'll give you a red border 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 <laughs> so okay you won Oh, come on, I can't lose. I just can't lose. What? Okay, cool. There you go. Okay, so that's that's what happens when you lose. Okay, so again, all the other um, values work as well, all the other buttons. Okay, so let's go over to index.html. And before I write any JavaScript, let's make sure that we add our JavaScript or link our JavaScript to HTML. Okay, and again, we do that right before the ending body tag, yo. Okay, <laughs> app.js, okay, we have that and uh, once we have this, we can just go to here and just do hello. Let's see what that gives us. Refresh, okay, let's first open this file, okay, because this is the working version, this is the final version. So we'll go to here, open in browser, okay? So this is what we have right now. Right now, nothing works. You see, when I click on it, nothing works because we haven't done any of that yet. So let's go to console and let's make sure that our JavaScript was working and it is working, cool. So now let's go to app.js, let's collapse that thing. All right, okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is cache the DOM, okay? So then you're like, Tenzin, what the hell is cache the DOM? What, what does it mean, okay? Let me first do it, and then I'll, ex I'll explain, okay? So, so the first thing we need are the actual scores, right? So the actual variables. So then what we can do is say const, I'll call them user score equals zero, okay? It start, it's gonna start at zero. Const computer score equals zero. Okay, now uh, we're gonna update this later depending on who wins and stuff like that. Uh, but we also need to show it to the page, right? The document, our DOM. Uh, so for that, what we'll do is say const um, user score lm or just say underscore span equals document dot get element by ID user score because we gave it an, gave it an ID of user score right here if you remember right there right um and then we're gonna do the same thing for computer score okay so let's copy that paste and i'm just gonna do computer score here sp underscore span tag and this is gonna be computer score let's go to computer okay cool so now you're wondering why the hell am i doing this type this weird thing right here okay so i this is my own style okay um you want to be consistent, okay? You don't necessarily have to do this. So the underscore, I put it there to clearly differentiate between normal variables and then DOM variables, okay? So these are DOM variables, right? So like HTML variables that store DOM elements, okay? So I can clearly tell that. And also now when I put span, because I put those things in a span tag, now I can clearly tell that, hey, it's in a span tag, okay? So that's just uh, my way of doing things. So, okay, you can do your own, like you don't have to put the underscore there, you can just do span tag here, right? But that's just what I do, okay? So 
I think it's a pretty good idea to do, do it this way because you can tell, okay, it's a, it's a very DOM variable just because of the under, underscore and then you know what type of um, element it is like by span tag, div tag, input tag, right? Whatever it is, you just put that and then w later on when you're debugging and trying to look through your HTML file, it's gonna be so much easier, okay? So I highly, highly recommend you do this, okay? All right, now let's get the scoreboard. I'm gonna call it scoreboard underscore div because I stored that in a div tag, okay? It's a div tag. And then do document dot query selector or, yeah, query selector and I'm gonna say dot scoreboard, okay? and that's because we called it scoreboard right here. Okay, we gave it a class of scoreboard. All right, so once we have this, let's keep going. Let's get this result div. So I'll go here and say result div, div, okay, equals document dot query selector dot um, result. And now let's also get the rock, paper, and scissor buttons, okay? So for those, we're just gonna do const rock div because I stored that in a div, I think. Yep, yep, and I'm gonna do document dot get element by ID equals, um, that's gonna be R, okay? Yep, and copy paste, and this is gonna be paper div and uh, P, this is gonna be PS, and uh, let's go here and do rock, paper, scissors div. Okay, all right, so now we have cached the DOM. Now let's go back to why we call it caching the DOM, okay? So, so caching the DOM really means, uh, so caching in general really means storing something for future use, okay? So here what we're doing is we're doing exactly the same thing. We're storing all of these things in variables so that we can use it later, okay? And it's not just for convenience sake, right? It's uh, User score span is a lot like smaller, like less to write than document dot get element by ID user score every single time, right? But there's also a performance factor. So imagine every time we need to do something, we need to use that uh, document dot get element by ID user score. We need to get that reference point. Imagine us doing document dot get element by ID every single time, right? When we do that, what we're doing is we're doing a we're running a process, and we're running that process every single time. Uh, we need to get the reference to that element instead of storing that in a variable once and then we use that variable again because the variable already has the reference to that element, okay? It's like, imagine you're at a library, right? And you're working on this research paper and uh, you need to get the source for your research paper, right? You need a lot of sources from this particular book. And now every time you need that book, you get away from that, you stand up, you get away from the table, your desk, and then you go to that shelf, find that book, take it out, read it, find that source, and you're like, hmm, okay, you memorize it, and then you put it back, you go to um, your desk, and then write the source down, and then when you need some other sources again, you go back to that book, and you repeat the same process again and again, right? That's terrible, right? very inefficient. It's gonna take you years, okay, to, to finish that paper. Um, instead, what you can do is go, go find that book, bring it, place it down temporarily here so that your book is right here on your table, your desk, if you need a source. So then what you can do is go here, okay, I need a source, all right, cool. Better yet, just leave the book open, right? So that's like caching the DOM, right? Instead of doing document.getElement, document.querySelector, every single time you play with that, you store it in a variable, so then it's just running that process one time, and then we have the reference point in that variable. So we're really being efficient in terms of performance and also convenience, right? It's really convenient. All right, all right, so let's, let's move forward. All right, so now let's talk about what happens when we click on those individual buttons, okay? So when we click on rock, what we need to do is take that value, okay, it's a rock, and then compare it against a computer's choice, which is just going to be a random choice between those three options, and then we compare those two, and then check who wins, and then display the result back on the DOM, in the DOM, okay? So I'm gonna first, add some event listeners to each 
button. Okay, so we'll do add, add, rock div dot add event listener. On a click, I wanna write a function, and that function is just gonna do console.log. Hey, you clicked on rock. Okay, so let's see if this works. Okay, so refresh and inspect, go to console, and now I'm gonna click on rock. Okay, there it is, right? Once you click on it, it goes, hey, you clicked on rock, right? Now let's do the same thing for these three. Okay, so we'll do three DD. Whoa, not DD. <laughs> let's do, okay, that's fine. All right, so now we'll change this to paper div. We'll change that to paper and uh, we'll change this to scissors and uh, come on and we'll change this to scissors div as well okay so now refresh and now when I click on rock it's gonna say hey you clicked on rock when I click on paper it's gonna say hey you clicked on paper and uh, same thing for the scissors right there it is there you go okay so now that we have those buttons working let's go further okay so right now we're just console.logging we don't want a console.log okay we want some things happening okay other than console.log so what I'll do is I will create a function called game okay so I'm gonna pretend like I've already created that so I'm gonna do game and then if the user clicks rock diff I'm gonna provide an argument of uh, rock okay R and if the user clicks paper I'm gonna give it an argument of P and then if the user clicks scissors I'm gonna give it a give it an argument of s all right so let's get rid of the console.log console.log and if i refresh right now nothing's going to happen it's going to give you an error because it says game is not defined okay because we don't have a function defined for a game so let's do that before i do that i'm actually going also going to create a function called main and then wrap all of this inside of that okay let's do this and uh, come down here and then we, we will indent all of this stuff. Okay, cool. And now to run this, we'll just do main up top here. Okay, so now if I refresh, right, it's still gonna give you that error because game is not defined. So then we can define that game down here. Uh, we'll actually just keep it, you know, in a chronological order. So now let's define a function called game and uh, of course, our game function is going to take a user input, right? User choice in this case. Um, <clears throat> so what we're saying is, again, when somebody clicks on any of these buttons, take the value of those buttons, uh, whatever it is, R, P, S, right? Rock, paper, scissors, and then uh, compare it against a computer's choice and then get the result back, okay? So here, we're just gonna say user choice, choice, user choice, 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 choice user choice and let's just say console.log um, poop for now okay so let's copy that and paste that a couple of times and we'll do plus and we'll do user choice okay whatever it is so choice what is happening come on give me I don't know why it's not doing that but let's do that all right so now let's see what happens okay so now what I will do is click on these buttons and it should basically give me, you know, whatever I pressed on it. R, P, S. This gives me R, P, S. It's kind of hiding in there, but it's there, I promise you, right there, okay? So let's go back. Rock, paper, scissor, right? So again, it's just a function that we're calling here, right? So when, when we call this, R gets passed in here, and then this gets pass to this and you know how functions work okay if you don't know how functions work go watch my go take my javascript course okay so go do that all right so once we have this again we don't want console.log so we know that we have a user choice but now we need a computer choice, okay? So to get a random computer choice, I'll just uh, put that in a separate function, okay? Um, so I want you guys to be comfortable with at running functions in other functions okay so what, what we'll do is function and uh, we'll say get computer choice okay and we'll just do this all right so what are what are the options right what are the choices the choices are r 
P S. Okay, so we'll create the choices. Const choices equals an array, and we'll say whoa R P and uh, S. Okay, so we have those, and now to get a random element uh, from the choices array, we do that with the help of the built-in object in JavaScript called math. Okay, I think we've used that in the unit converter. Yeah, I think so. So we can do things like math. So here, let's just do console.log math dot random. Okay, so that's what you use, math.random. Math is a built-in object in JavaScript, and random is a method that exists in that math object. Okay, so we can use that. So what this does is it gives you a random number between zero and one, okay? So you're like, what, what does that help with anything? Let's go into that in just a little bit, but let's first see what this does, okay? So we'll do refresh, and we have that. Refresh, 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 right? It'll never go, uh, it'll never reach one. It'll always be between zero and one, okay? It'll be a random number, basically. Now what we can do is say, okay, a number between zero and one is cool, but in this case, we don't want that, okay? What we want is a random number between zero and three right? Zero, one, or two. So then we can say, okay, if it's, if we get one, we can just do, oh, choice is one, give me P. If we get a random number, let's say zero, we can just do choice is zero, which is R, right? So how we do that is with times three, okay? You're like, how does that work? How does that work? Well, let's, let's see, okay? So refresh, refresh, it'll never go over three. You see? It'll always be like zero, one, or two. You see that? I'm refreshing like a maniac right now. <laughs> and uh, how that works is, let's do some math here. Like zero point, let's, let's do uh, something really low, right? Um, between zero and one, which is like 0 0.0001 or something. So let's do 0 0.0001 times three. Well, that's just gonna give you something really close to zero, okay? That makes sense. And now let's do something really close to one, okay? So let's do 0 0.99999 times three. You see, it never reaches three. So that's how we get random numbers between zero and three. If you want random numbers between zero and 10, all we do is just put 10 there. That's it. And now you get random numbers between zero and 10, okay? It will never reach 10, okay? If you want it to reach 10, you can just do 11 there, okay? Um, but again, this is not helpful to us. Again, let me change that back to three. This is still not hel helpful because we still can't do uh, choices, you know, 0 0.4, right? It doesn't make sense, okay? So what we need to do is actually round it down, okay? Make it a whole number instead of a decimal number, okay? So for that, we use another method that exists in the math object called math.floor, okay? And that's it. So now, refresh, look at that, one. One, two, zero, I'm, I'm refreshing like maniac again. Command R, 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 you see? It'll always be a random number between zero and three, right? Zero, one, or two. So now what we can do is instead of console.logging this, we can just store that in a variable. So we'll do random number equals that. Okay, cool. So we have that so far, but now we don't want the number, we want the element. So we can just do return choices, random number. Okay, so now let's run this. Refresh, refresh, whoa. What is going on here? Let's see. It doesn't seem to be working. Uh, oh, we didn't console.log this. Console.log, go here, okay. There it is, right? Refresh, 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 refresh. So it's gonna be a random, it's gonna basically give you a random element from that choices array, okay? So let's get rid of that. We know that our function works, so now we can move forward in that game user choice function, okay? So now we have user choice, now we need to get the computer choice, so we can just do const computer choice choice equals get computer choice and that's it okay so now let's do console.log computer choice here that, it, we know it works but 
let's just test it for the hell of it. Let's go down here, game, and let's um, just do C or something. It doesn't really matter right now. So, you see that? Right, it, it basically gives you the random computer choice. So again, if I do console.log, user choice, let's do user choice. Um, I don't know, let's uh, do something like user choice um, that plus, yeah, let's do that. And then let's go here, get that guy, put it down here. And we'll do, this is gonna be computer choice Maybe I'm going overboard here, but <laughs> let's uh, let's test it, okay? <laughs> there it is, okay? So, um, again, refresh. You see, the computer choice always changes, but the user choice doesn't change because we said C, right? So, but if we get rid of that and actually press on the button now, let's see what happens, right? So now when I click on the R, rock, it's always going, the user choice is always gonna be rock, R and the computer choice changes, right? It's gonna be random. And if I click on the hand, right, rock, paper, then it's gonna be, the user choice is always gonna be P and then the computer choice changes again. And then if I click on scissors, it's gonna be S, the user choice is gonna be S and computer is gonna change again, okay? All right, so once we have this, now what we can say is, now we have to compare, right? Now we do, if, you know, uh, user picks uh, rock and computer picks scissor, then it's a win, right? If the user picks uh, paper and the computer picks scissor, then it's a loss, right? So we have to do that. So then, now what we can do is, um, instead of using if statement, I'm going to use switch statement here. I'm gonna give you a quick intro here, but I highly recommend you check up the documentation, we're gonna check the documentation of switch. So basically how it works is, um, let's say we have a variable here called um, name, okay? And we'll just say name is David, all right? And now, usually what we do is if name equals, you know, uh, David, you know, console.log, uh, hello, right? If we do, and then else if, name is equal to pineapple, then then, then do console.log hey, right? And then uh, depending on how the name changes, it's gonna either do hello or hey, right? If I put, right now it's gonna do hello because name is David, right? But if I put pine there, console.log hello is gonna run, okay? But switch statements, how it works is, it's very similar. All you do is switch and then the argument, so in this case, it's name, right? And then what you do is um, case and say, if the case is apple, colon, all, all I want you to do is um, say hello, console.log or console.log, this is apple. And then break, and then all you do is say case, pine, then I want you to do console.log, something else like whatever, and then, uh, whoa and then break here, right? So this is how switch statements work, okay? Very similar, you can do everything that you can do, it's, uh, do with switch statements with if statements and vice versa. But in some cases, switch statements make things a lot easier than you know if statements. So here what we can do is say, switch user choice plus computer choice, okay? So let's first take care of all the cases, all the situations when the user wins, okay? So the user will win if the user choice is uh, R and rock and uh, the computer choice is paper, yep. And uh, if the user choice is paper and the computer choice is rock and if the computer choice user choice is scissors and the computer choice is rock no paper yeah <laughs> yeah r p p r s p okay in those cases what we want to do is say console.log user wins okay and then break you always need to put that break or else it'll keep going to the bottom. We don't want that. So we'll also do case. So now we'll, we'll take care of when the user loses. So if the user picks um, 
Brock and the computer picks, what wins with Brock? <laughs> Paper, okay. And uh, user picks uh, rock, paper, and computer picks scissors, and uh, rock, scissors, and computer picks uh, rock, okay? In those cases, we just wanna say console.log computer wins, okay? Or user loses, let's just keep things very consistent, loses. All right, and break again. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the rest. So we'll do five, Y, Y, paste. Okay, cool. And now for the case, the last one is if the if they're both equal, right? So we can just do RR, this one's simple, right? RP, RS, okay, cool. So RR, PP, SS. In those cases, it's just, um, it's uh, draw, okay? All right, so that's it. So now, Let's see what happens when we click on these buttons, all right? So I'm gonna refresh here, nothing's there. Click on rock one time, whoa, nothing happened. Okay, let's hold on, let's do it again. Click on rock, okay, cool, I don't know what, what happened there. Click on rock, okay, it's wor it works. User wins, user wins, let me click. keep clicking, it's a draw, it's a uh, wins, wins, I'm never losing. I think there's something's wrong there. Is something wrong there? I think something's wrong there. Let's see. Oh my God, silly me. Okay, so here it's not supposed to be RP. It's supposed to be rock and scissors, right? If computer a user picks rock and computer picks scissors, user still wins, okay? So I knew something was wrong there, but uh, I was just so gone earlier. Okay, so let's refresh and see if it works. Okay, so now we have loses, some loses, some wins, and some draw, okay? Which is which makes sense. So if I click on the hand icon, paper, we have some wins, some loses, and some draws. Same thing for the scissors. Okay, so we know that our game function works, okay? But now it's just in the console.log, right? It's not showing anything up there on the page. It's not doing anything, right? Which is not what we want, all right? So for this, what we can do is we can, again, separately create different functions for winning, losing, and draw, okay? We never wanna put and jam all the logic in one function, never, ever, okay? Because then later on, it's it's hard to read, it's hard to debug, it's hard to work with other people, it's just bad, okay? So instead of logging wins and stuff like that, what we'll do is we'll say wins, create a function called wins, okay? So right now, we're just, pre I'm pretending that we've already created a function called wins, okay? So when the user wins, actually let's do win, okay? And when the user wins, I want to do something with the win function, okay? And I also want to do, um, when the user loses, I wanna do lose. And then when the user draws, it's when it's a draw, I just wanna do draw, okay? Now, I can go up top here and do those functions again. So let's do function, win, and then let's just console.log win for now, okay? I just wanna, Again, test it right away, okay? Don't move forward, I mean, this is like, we know this is gonna work, but I'm just trying to prove a point, okay? Um, so let's do Y, uh, paste, paste, okay? Let's go here, all right, cool. So now, if for this one, lose, come on, lose, and uh, this is gonna be lost and go down here, this is gonna be draw, and we'll just say draw, okay? All right, so now, let's see what happens. Okay, so it's still working. So again, let's go back and uh, start working, okay? So right now, we have win, and now when we win, we want to show, uh, what, we, what do we wanna do first? We want to first increase the user's score. Right? So the first thing we do is we go up, we have user score and computer score, right? So what we can do is say user score, user score plus plus. That's it, all right? And let's go to the lost, I mean, it's, 
it's this is not really really realistic usually you don't like work in three functions functions at once right but i'm just showing you here you can just do like uh computer score plus plus here okay but we're not going to do that we're just we'll work on this function and then we'll work on this and then we'll work on draw okay so uh one at a time all right so user score plus plus and now let's just show user score okay let's see what it is okay and um Let's wait for, let me, hold on. Let's do console.log, uh, it's a win, okay? All right, so now refresh and let's see what happens. Okay, it's a draw, let's keep clicking, draw, 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 draw. Okay, so now it's saying assignment to constant, okay. So what's happening right now, it's saying, you're trying to change the, a constant variable, okay? This const. So what we do is instead of const, we can either use let, or var okay we should we should be okay using let here okay so we can just use let um all right so now let's go back here and uh, do the same thing draw you see that when you uh, when you when we win the score went up by one and uh, it's a one now again if i cl keep clicking you see whenever we win it goes up holy crap we just won like seven at a, at ones or something like eight eight times in a row, <laughs> that's crazy. So let's go back and uh, instead of win here, I don't want win, I don't want console.log user score. What I want is I wanna show it on the page. So what we do is instead of console.logging, we just go user score span, okay? Because that's the element, right? Because we're saying user get element by ID user score and that's the span tag this span tag right here, okay? So let's go back and all we do is user score span dot inner HTML equals user score. That's it, all right? So now, and then we can also do the um, computer score, right? So we'll also update the computer score. Even though right now, since we only have the win function, it's not gonna, the computer score is gonna remain the same. So let's do equals um computer score okay all right so now let's keep clicking you see that when the user wins the score goes up right again uh, it says assignment to constant variable oh inner html all right not in our text html okay <laughs> refresh and uh that should be okay now okay so every time we win uh the user score goes up Okay, so once we have the score, now we need to actually display the message that says paper beats rock or whatever, right? And for that, we can't do that yet, okay? And that's because we we don't have anything that says, you know, any reference in our win function, right? We have that in our game function, but not in our win function, okay? So what we can do is give it some parameters here and say user choice and computer choice Okay, or you can just say user, computer, doesn't really matter what you call it, okay? Uh, a, B, you can call it anything you want, okay? I'm just gonna call it user choice, computer choice, okay? And uh, down here, again, just to, just so you guys don't um, get confused, I'll just do user computer for now, okay? Um, and then down here, what we can say is, when, when you actually run the function, right? This is defining a function, but when you actually run the function, pass in whatever the, whatever the user choice and computer choice is, okay? So as, a, as an argument here, I'll just do user choice and then computer choice, okay? And then I do that for all of the other ones. So user choice and computer choice, and we'll define the lose and draw function in a bit. So user choice and computer choice, okay? And now let's do console.log user choice uh not user choice let's just do user because remember we changed it um so that you guys don't get confused computer and refresh and now you see it's gonna be rs every single time because it's always gonna be a win right because this is a win function it only takes care of win right it's not gonna take care of when you lose and draw okay so that's what happens but we don't want that what we want is uh we don't want a console.log we want to show it on the page so what we do is get the result diff uh result div dot inner html and say you know user choice plus beats plus computer choice 
okay? And then we'll say plus you win. Okay, so let's see if this works. So let's wait for when we win. User choice is not defined. Why is it that? Okay, we called it user and computer. Again, I keep forgetting that. So we'll just call it user choice, okay? That just makes more sense. So we'll do user choice, computer choice, okay. All right. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that right now. Oh, okay, so when we actually got the uh, reference to that element, we said document dot query selector dot result okay and if we take a look at our index.html we stored that not in the result I mean we did but it's inside of a p tag inside of the result okay so here really what we want is say p okay get the p tag get the paragraph tag inside of the result so now when we actually change this it's gonna be a paragraph okay so here we should really call this not div but p all right so let's go down here and uh, where is the um, would do we use the result p anywhere else let's hope not okay and uh let's go here and let's call it p and this should work and now let's see when we win there it is r beats s you win right however R beats S is not so readable, okay? R beats S, not so readable. We want it to be human readable, okay? So what we can do is um, convert this to rock and this to scissors, okay? And we'll create another functions for those, okay? For those things. So in this case, a function, not, not functions, okay? Function and we'll call it convert um, to word or something. All right, and it'll take in a letter, and then we just do, if the letter is equal to R, just return rock. If the letter is equal to P, paper, return paper. And if those two are not met, then just return scissors, okay? Okay, so now here, what we can do is just say convert to word and uh, go down here as well convert to word okay and refresh you see that right now it says paper covers rock because we're not winning it's a draw draw but then when you win rock beats scissors okay you win okay so that works but now while we're at it, I also want to introduce you guys to some ES6, okay? So right now, this is uh, this is ES5 right here, right? When you have to uh, combine a variable with a string, all you do is plus, okay? Which is cool, but uh, not so cool, okay? <laughs> so in ES6, there's something called template strings, and all you do is with the backticks, okay? And if you don't know what where the backtick is, you can Google that, but on a Mac, it's on the top left corner, right below the escape button, okay? On Windows, it's probably there, but if it's not, just look it up on your keyboard. Uh, you, you should be able to find it, okay? And then all you do is wrap the end in a back tick as well, and that's it, okay? So now you can get rid of the pluses and, uh, and the um, quotes. So let's do that, get rid of that, get rid of that, and uh, let's get rid of the Plus is there, you win. Okay, that's good. Let's get rid of the quotes at the end there. And now uh, the convert to word user choice is not a string, right? Right now, if I display this, it's just, gonna, it's just gonna display them as strings, which is not cool, right? That's what, right? That's not cool. So what we do is if it's a variable, in this case, it's gonna you know, return, it's a function. So uh, we just do, dollar sign and wrap that with curly brace, okay? So that's all it is, okay? And then we do the same thing with convert. And there you go, all right? Paper covers rock, you win. Let's keep going, rock beats scissors, right? Now there's, it's not gonna say convert to word user choice, you see? Right, so this is a lot more readable, okay? So. Now that we have the basic functionality of the win function working, 
Now that we have that, we can move on and just copy this, okay? Copy this and just paste it right here, okay? So we can just say, actually before that, um, let's work on one more thing before we move on, okay? So right now we have rock beat scissors, but um, it's still like not clear who's winning who, right? You can see your numbers going up, but uh, you can't really tell who's, who's, who picked rock and who picked scissors, okay? You can kind of you know calculate that because if you picked rock, of course you're the one who picked rock. But um, it, let's keep, let's make that super clear. So what we can do is right here, we can just add something and uh, we'll just say we can just some do something like you know um, let's do let's just do this is always gonna be user right user and uh, this is always going to be computer comp okay this is cool like that's cool but it's a little too long okay I don't wanna I don't want to make that and it's it it just doesn't look good okay I thought about doing it you know make uh, like putting a picture somewhere here right uh, that'd be pretty cool but um, I didn't I, I wanted to keep it keep things simple okay so here um, what we can do is say const do small word or small user word yeah small um, user word sure word equals user and just do dot uh, font size okay that's how you control the font size okay I'm also I also did this so that I can expose you to these little you know string methods in JavaScript okay so user dot font size we'll do three okay we'll make it super small and then we'll superscript that okay so now what we can do is make the same thing and uh, do comp and then we'll do font size of three and superscript that as well. So um, superscript is basically, let me let me remove that for now and uh, let's first, whoa, let's first, let's go up, up, okay. So now instead of user here, we just put that in a curly brace, okay, like that. And then do small user word and then we'll say, um, come down here and do the same thing with this guy. So we'll do, small comp word wait I don't think I called it comp word okay let's go up yep for this one it's gonna be small comp word okay and this is gonna be comp font size 3 so let's see how it looks now come on you see that so that's how it looks right now but right now it's on the same line so what I want to do is I want to superscript that or subscript I think subscript wor would work better so subscript superscript would do this Let's do dot sup dot sup okay and uh, these methods exist on the string object in JavaScript it's built into JavaScript so and if you put sub it's gonna move that down or B refresh there it is okay so this looks a lot nicer than just that okay again if you guys prefer the brackets it's okay it doesn't uh, the parentheses, it's okay, you get, you guys can use it, okay? Bracket, uh, parentheses U, parentheses um, C, just use that, if that's easier to understand, okay? So, all right, so we have the basic functionality working, so what I wanna do is, I just want to copy all of this, okay? So, I'll just do copy and paste, okay? Because the functionality is gonna be the same thing, right? And uh, let's do this, and... Uh, Let's paste that as well. Okay, so we have that. And uh, let's indent that. Wait, what? Okay, so we indented that. All right, so now let's take care of lose and then we'll go into draw, okay? So right now when we lose, we don't want the user score to go up, we want the computer score to go, go up, right? And we don't want, uh, let's see. We don't. We want to show this, right? User span inner HTML equals that. That is good. That is good. That is good. And then in the res result p, what we want to say is do loses to. Okay. Loses to computer. You lost. And not. Not that. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Not that. 
and that's it. So now when we lose, it should do that too. Let's let's add in a poop there. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Refresh. Okay, whoa, user choice is not defined. Uh, what's going on? Let's see. It says app.js line 38. User choice is not, oh, okay, you see that? We didn't define it here. Okay, user choice, computer choice. All right, so refresh and uh, you win. Let's see what happens. You lost, okay, we have a poop. That's a happy poop. He's happy, even, if, even when we lose. Okay, cool. So we have that and you can see that the computer score goes up when we lose, you see? Whenever we lose, the computer score goes up, okay? And when it's draw, nothing happens right now because we need to, again, code that, okay? Okay, so we have done that and now let's go to the draw and uh, here we don't do user score plus plus or do any plus plus because it's draw, nobody goes up, okay? You can um, like make both of them, their score go up but that, <laughs> That just doesn't make sense. So we'll just do those two. Um, and uh, we don't need to do these, right? Yeah, we don't need to do that. And, uh, or do we? Let's see. Yeah, we don't need to do any of that for a draw. Um, for draw, we can just keep, yeah, we can just keep that the same. So it's just like uh, equals, we'll just say equals and we'll do it's a draw okay and what emoji should I use boring no I don't know let's just use Apple <laughs> let's just not use anything <laughs> okay um, okay user choice is not defined again in our draw we gotta define that so choice user computer choice refresh and uh, Look at that, so now when we win, it's gonna say win, see? And when we lose, it's gonna say lost, right? And when we do draw, it's a rock equals rock, and it's a draw, okay? All right, so that's pretty much it in terms of the main logic of our app. All right, now let's add some finishing touches and do the little things, okay? You know what they say? They say the difference between the good and the great is that little extra, okay? That little extra. I don't know who said it, but the first time I heard it, I mean, and that's why I still suck. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. So if you notice on the working app, um, refresh, I don't know why that piece there, but it doesn't matter. So when I click on it, you see, if it's a draw, it's that gray, it adds that gray border, animates it and goes away, right? If I lose, that happens. And if I win, let's see if I win. There you go, right? The green thing, uh, border appears. So uh, for that, what we can do is in our win, lose, and draw functions, we can add some things to it, okay? So what we do is we can first uh, work with the win, okay? So what we'll do is go here, and let's go to our working app right now. If I refresh, nothing happens, right? I mean, uh, the message pops up, everything else works, but the um, animation's not there, okay? So for that, what we can do is um, add a class to each of them, okay? So when the user wins, and if we click this guy, it should add a class with some styles to this div, okay? So how we do that is, first we have to make some styles. I mean, some classes, right, in our style, uh, styles.css. Um, and uh, this is JavaScript video, but I left this off for JavaScript because uh, I felt like this had more to do with JavaScript than CSS, okay? So here we can do green glow, okay? So when the user wins, we want some green border to appear. So I'll do border, four pixels, solid, and let's do 4DCC70. Okay, and then we'll get a box shadow, okay? Box shadow of zero, zero, four pixels or 10 pixels, and we'll give it a color, a darker green color. Let's do 31B4, 3A for this, okay? And now let's do the same for red glow, okay? 
red glow and we do something similar so let's grab that and in this case we want to add a color of something reddish let's do fc 121b and uh, for the box shadow color let's do d01115 okay and now let's repeat the same process for for the gray color so we'll do gray glow and we'll do something grayish 464647 and for this one we'll do 25292b more darker okay that looks good and if you don't know how the box shadow works um this is the uh, horizontal vertical offset and then you have the blur and the color okay that's all it is and then you can you, ha you can have an optional value here for spread how, how far your shadow should go but again you can look that up it's super simple it's not that hard so now let's go to the javascript part and here now that we have those classes what we can do is say when the user wins okay when the user wins uh what i what we want to do is add a class of green glow to whichever div the user clicked on okay if the user clicked on the uh, rock div it should give it should give that rock div a class of uh, green glow okay and that's going to give that border of green okay so now for that what we can do is say document dot get element by id of r right but r is a hard-coded letter right Ar argument and that's not what we want because then it will only give that green color only if we click on the rock what what, what if we won when we clicked on the paper right it's, it's not going to do that we'll have to uh, hard code everything so that's not what we want to do here what we want to do is get the user choice okay and again user choice here is whatever you know, user clicks on it and then it's either you know basically it's either r p or s okay it's one letter uh depending on what the user clicked on okay so we do document dot get element by id user choice dot class list class list is a method that exists in the dom and with javascript when you do that what you what it gives you is an array of all the classes on that specific element okay and now what we do is on that array we just do dot add and then add our class so then we can just say dot green glow here okay and that's it so now let's see what happens when we click something and if we win let's see what happens okay refresh click 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 let's see if i win it's winning but it's not doing that let's see what why that is oh I'm not supposed to put the period there because we know it's gonna be a class, okay? Um, so we don't need to put that there, okay? And there it is. So the border here is not working, okay? So the glow is working, the box shadow is working, but the border is not working, okay? So it's still white. And I think there's some CSS conflict, so I'm not gonna look through everything and try to fix it. What I will do is I will just put that important flag, okay? Maybe we can just move all this down at the very bottom and that should fix it. Let's try that first because putting the important flag is never a good idea, okay? So we'll go down all the way down and put it here, okay? Let's see if that makes a difference, okay? Uh, let's go here refresh and uh, there it is okay so we didn't have to put that important flag okay cool let's um, also make sure it works on paper and scissors okay it works on all of them if we win clicking on any of those buttons it will add a border of green however it's still green right it's not supposed to be green if you go here right if we win it just goes back to white right it's it has that little animation so how do we do that right so we do that by using something called a set timeout function in javascript okay and we can do this thing with css but i just wanted to do this with javascript so i can introduce you guys to set timeout maybe we've done that with um, the digital clock i think we use set 
interval there. But um, yeah, let's do set timeout, okay? So let's go over what set timeout does. So here, let me just run it in the out in the global scope. Let's do set timeout and set timeout takes two arguments, okay? It's gonna take in a function and let's do function and let's just say console.log hello. Okay, and the second argument it takes is the time in milliseconds of how long you should wait before you perform that first argument, first function. Okay, so if I do 3000 milliseconds here, which is three seconds, um, it will wait, if I run this, okay, it will wait three seconds and then it will say hello. Okay, so if I refresh here, let's count, zero, one, two, boom. There it is, right? If I do one second, it should happen in, in a second. Refresh, one. There it is, right? So that's how that works. So let's comment that out. Let's not comment that, let's get rid of it. It's pretty simple. Maybe let's undo and actually grab it so then we can just use that in our function there. And there you go. Okay, so instead of console.logging here, what we need to do is, um, run something else, okay? And what we do here is, so we added a class called Green Glow, right? When we clicked on that div, when we won. But now, right after that, what we need to say is, hey, wait for three seconds or one second or however many seconds, and then remove that class. Okay, so let's do that. Um, so we can just do document dot get element by ID of user choice again, and then dot class list dot remove green glow okay and now you can see it happening if I go to um, let's refresh and let's go to here inspect and let me drag this to the right a little bit and let's go look at all these diffs okay let's see what happens when I win okay let me uh, refresh again Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna click on this. I lost, draw, no. There it is, right? So it it was there for a second and then it went away, okay? Again, again, let's, come on, let me win. There you go, right? It adds that green glow class and then it removes that, okay? Again, again, it works on the paper and scissors too, like, come on, win, there you go stays there, goes away, okay? So right now, it's not so natural because uh, if you notice here, come on, let me win once, please. No, 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 no. What? Okay, you see, it's it takes a little too long for it to go away. So what we should do is make that like 300 milliseconds, okay? Which I think is a little bit more natural. So now, if I win here, I don't have luck with paper, let's go with rock. There you go, right? It's a little bit more, more natural, it's faster, okay? So now we can just copy and paste this, and also you can you can probably, you know, put this in a variable because we're using it twice here, right? Let's be efficient, let's just do it, okay? Let's just do it. So we'll just go up top here, and um, uh, since these are variables, we should probably move this up top here. Okay, and uh, let's just do const. And we'll just call it user choice div. Let's go here and we'll call it document dot get element by ID user choice. Okay, and now we can replace this whole thing with user choice div. Okay, and let's do the same thing with this guy here user choice div, okay? That looks good. And now we can just copy this two more times. Let's go here, copy that, and here instead of green glow, what we want is red glow, right? Because we lost, and uh, let's go here as well. Uh, red glow, and uh, let's go down, and for that we can just do paste, whoa. Let's get that, okay. And here, let's just do gray glow. Let's go up top, gray glow. We'll have to get that variable as well, so copy. 
let's just get to the top, paste, um, paste, and uh, let's move this to the top as well. All right, so that looks good. Um, let's refresh here, let's see. One, gray, lost. Okay, this seems to be working, let's go to the paper. Gray, gray, lost, Gr one, lost, lost, gray, come on. Did I win, can I, can I please win? I swear, okay, there you go, it's working. Um, gray, lost, okay, so lost and gray works, okay. Winning works too, okay? All right, so that works. Now I wanna do one last thing before I call it a day, okay? So let's go here to our function and let's ES6ify it, okay? So let's, uh, instead of doing it the ES5 version here instead in this inner function, in ES6 what you do is get rid of this function name and then add an arrow, okay? And then if it's just a one-liner here, this user choice div dot class list is just one line, right? So for that, we can just get rid of this curly brace, okay? And now let's get rid of it. And this should still be working. So let's go to Red Glow and see if it works. Let's see when we lose, what happens? Come on, can I lose now? There it is, right? It still works. So we can do the same thing for all of this. So let's get rid of that, add an arrow. And since it's one line, we can just get rid of this and get rid of that. Cool, and now let's go to the win section and let's do the same thing. Get rid of these two. Let's go and get rid of that. And add the arrow. Okay, refresh. It's still working. Whoa, what happened? Oh, get rid of that. Okay, there it is. It still works. Um, Cool, everything looks good, and uh, I think we have some ES5, yep, ES5 code here, so we'll also fix these. All right, so here again, we can just do the same thing. Just go here, add the arrow, get rid of this, this, get rid of this, 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 and that's it. And uh, let's do the same thing here, get rid of that, add an arrow, whoa. And uh, let's pull these up, get rid of that, get rid of these two, get rid of these two. All right, and now again, let's do the same thing. Okay, okay, get rid of that, get rid of that. And that's it, right? I think that's it. Okay, so let's make sure it's working before anything. All right, this is working, all the clicks are working, and looks good. Let me delete the lines here. Wow, this is looking very, very sexy. Okay, um, I think that's it. All right guys, so that's it for rock, paper, scissors. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. Peace out, dude!